on to the 1960s. So Ken, a bit of color on this tray. Absolutely. And Talk it, to me it, about gets, it. it gets back to this notion of the Swiss watch industry did pay attention to what was going on in the rest of the world. And we're talking about the decade of the Beatles, Carnaby Street, mini skirts, courage dresses, uh, and then psychedelia. And these actually border on that period where, uh, shall we say, psychedelia ruled music and film. The Doxa isn't just a case of color, although it was the first watch to have an orange dial. I believe that the argument was about which color was, uh, had the best visibility for scuba diving. But you said there are also some other firsts. Well, I believe that they're one of the first to have the helium escape valve in the in the Doxa. Obviously, the Sea Dweller was was of that era as well. They've had a real renaissance of late, mm. Doxa, and they've and they've, you see our display of Doxas downstairs. Oh, it's unbelievable! There's some, there's some beautiful coloured dials in there. But yes, yeah, so that, that, I think they. I don't know who determined it exactly. Went down how the colours were exactly. Yeah, yeah but the, the orange apparently is the last colour that you'd see mm. uh, in the depths of the ocean. Well, it's interesting because now, as you say, they've got. What, eight colors? Oh, I'll have to check. And the rest? <laughs> but like Panerai, this was another beneficiary of a happy accident because I believe Clive Cussler, right, not Cussler, not Kessler, wrote the Dirk Pitt novels, and Dirk Pitt wore this by name. And the watch was always in production, but for many years it was only sold direct, I believe, until the new ownership which brought us all these colors, revived this as an iconic piece. And it is, it's one of the most distinctive watches ever made. Yeah. It's been copied by so many others. I, I couldn't even list all the brands that have come out with orange dials. But if you put this next to one of the originals, it's like all of the other pairings we've shown. This has defied time, and now it is one of the hottest watches going. Yeah. The other amazing thing about it is it's really reasonably priced. Mm, correct. Absolutely, we're, we're enjoying good times with Doxa, and it's, as they say, it's got a very credible history. There. Is Orange America. still the best seller? Yes, absolutely. Um, and the race. Oh. The this, the, at the end of the 1960s, the race was the, on. Tell one us of the deadly it. rivalries. One of the big quests in the watch industry, after automatics had been around for decades, but there were no automatic chronographs because chronographs are complicated, they're large, the, how do you get it into the case? Three completely separate organizations came up with them at the same time. And it will rage as an argument until the end of watch history. But Zenith, mm -hmm. Seiko, and a conglomeration of Swiss brands, and which I think included uh, Buren and uh, Hamilton and Hoyer. Well, Hoyer and I was going to say Hoyer, Hoyer. part of they? The difference was which used modules and which were integrated. And these two, I believe, were the integrated ones, whereas the other used a module. Now, the Zenith, I'm not going to fuel the fire by saying which came first, because it depends on which market it was launched in, which watch show it was first displayed at. But showing something at a, uh, an exhibition is not the same as actually producing them for sale. So the El Primero, whatever gets the uh, honor of being the first, is regarded by many watchmakers as the finest automatic chronograph of them all. And it was so good that for a couple of decades, it powered Rolexes. Rolex does not buy in another movement unless it is sublime. And El Primeros have become collectible long before Zenith returned to producing El Primeros in a big way. And this, I believe, is the modern representation Correct. of the watch from 1969. Correct, which is doing very well indeed. So yes, El, the El Primero movement, um, I'm, 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 I believe, is still the most decorated mm. uh, movement out there. And, and, and Zenith are very, doing extremely well at the moment for us. But um, this, this is an unusual piece. Yes. Though. This is now this. nicknamed the Pogue, okay. because an astronaut wore this specific one. And you notice it has a yellow dial. I uh -huh. believe it was also issued with a navy blue dial and a black dial and what we believe, I believe we could call a Pepsi Cola bezel. This is the Seiko entry into that first series of automatic watches. It's unusual because you can't wind it. You give it a shake to get it going. Price-wise, it's maybe 
10% of the cost of an El Primero. But these have become incredibly collectible because Seiko has an, is another brand that's gone undergone a miraculous revival. For example, today you can now buy Grand Seiko in the West, where I believe for 40 years, maybe longer, they were only sold to in Japanese Japan. customers. Correct. Seiko has had a renaissance that's just remarkable because people in the West are finally realizing that affordable watches can be hugely desirable, especially their Prospex diving watches. This is a cult watch. Uh, the colors alone speak, speak for it. And uh, if you have a, an historical tendency, owning a watch from 1969, whether it's with the Zenith, one of the ones from the conglomerate or from Seiko, is just a nice thing to have, like having an early uh, Reverso. But Seiko, uh, I have to say, I admire that brand so much that I now have at least 12 of their pieces covering probably 50 years. Oh, good show. And uh, if anyone says to me they want a serious manufacturer watch mm -hmm. and they don't have a ton of money, you can never go wrong with one of the Seikos.